Hello, I'm Charling and this is Brigador. So what is Brigador exactly, you might be asking? Well, to put it simply, it's a tactical twin-stick shooter where you control mechs, anti-gravs, which are anti-gravity vehicles, and tanks in a rebellion in a place called Soda Nobra. The game is presented in a neon-lit isometric view with awesome 80s-themed soundtrack. The entire game harkens back to the days of old arcade shooters. And aside from the neon setting, it actually reminds me a lot of Desert Strike on my old Sega Mega Drive. So when you load up the game, there are two game modes options to choose from, the campaign and freelance mode. The campaign mode is divided into 21 missions following the story of the events in Solonobra. It starts with some tutorial missions which teach you the controls of the various vehicles in the game, as well as some of the basic gameplay mechanics that are present. Now unfortunately the tutorial wasn't great. Uh, outside of explaining the extreme basics of the game, it fails to explain anything else. So even after finishing the tutorial, I felt somewhat lost when starting the first campaign mission. So I got assigned a mech with a preset loadout and was dropped into my first mission. The game failed to explain many of the HUD elements to me, which didn't really make the experience any easier to understand. Now obviously it didn't take too long to work out all this stuff, but I think it would have been nice if the game did a better job of explaining all the different aspects of its HUD and its mechanics. At any rate, there are 21 of these campaign missions. But the thing is this, the campaign missions are not the bulk of this game, they're actually more like challenges. The bulk of the game, or at least for me, was freelance mode. But when clicking on freelance mode, the game doesn't explain any of this either. There's a long list of pilots, each with a price next to the name, there's a long list of vehicles, divided into various factions, again, all with prices next to their names, and there's a long list of weapons, again, with prices next to their names. And the game doesn't say what these are for, or how you go about purchasing them, or what you have to do. Uh, it doesn't tell you any of this stuff until you find the acquisitions button on the menu screen. And again, none of this is explained. That is definitely my biggest complaint with Brigador, the lack of information on how all of these systems work. There is nowhere in the game where any of this is explained in an adequate manner. And honestly, this is really unfortunate. Because once you understand how it works, if you have the patience to sit through all of these things and work out for yourself and read up on forums, the game is so much more enjoyable. And if you're able to, or once you get past all of these things, you'll realize that Brigador really is quite a good game indeed. It's very customizable, it has a high skill ceiling, it's tough as nails, and extremely rewarding when you eventually manage to succeed. And unfortunately, the campaign doesn't actually highlight these things or showcase how customizable the game actually is. So I'm going to talk a little bit about freelance mode and the unlock system because to me, this is where Brigador shines. So you're going to earn money from completing successful runs. So you'll select your pilot, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this a little bit later in the video. You'll select a vehicle, of which there are 45 split between mechs, tanks, and agravs of a variety of different sizes and loadout capabilities, there are primary and secondary weapons, of which there are 40 to select from, and finally there's a special ability which you can select from as well. So once you're happy with your loadout, you're going to head into freelance mode. The first map set consists of three maps, so by completing the main objectives in the first two maps, you can head to the third map, which is the spaceport map, which in itself has main objectives as well. Once you've finished all of the main objectives on all three of the maps, you can head to the spaceport and leave the planet, at which point you're going to get a payout. Now, there are bonus objectives as well on all three of the maps. If you've done those as well, you're going to get some additional money. If you choose not to finish all three maps, you can go play the spaceport as the first or the second map, which allow you to leave once you finish that. But obviously, your payout is going to be a lot less since you haven't completed all three maps in the set. So with all the money that you've earned, you're going to head over to the Acquisitions tab and basically purchase new pilots, which are essentially difficulty settings. The more expensive pilots, as you head down the list, are going to be increasing in difficulty, but also increase in monetary bonus modifiers. In the Acquisitions tab, you're also going to be spending your cash on new vehicles, new weapons, and new special abilities, as well as unlocking new freelance modes. So there's a large variety of different map sets available. So the ones that you start with will be three maps that you have to finish to get the full bonus, whereas the ones toward the end are going to be up in the region of nine plus maps. So yeah, those are definitely going to be pretty challenging indeed. And on top of all of that, once you start unlocking more vehicles and weapons, you'll have a fair amount of choice as to how you want to build up each of your vehicles. Each weapon and each vehicle will require a different strategy. 
So there's definitely some room here for everyone, depending on what style of play you like to play in this kind of title. And even if you play through the first maps in the freelance mode, uh, for example, you can choose to do it with a high level pilot, which will increase the difficulty of the map. So even though you know the layout of the maps, the high difficulties do introduce new enemies. And the harder you get, the more difficult the enemies become, as well as introducing some boss monsters as well. So the same map can be really easy on one hand, but then become extremely challenging on the other, where knowing the actual layout of the map is going to be crucial to you succeeding. So all in all, there is a large degree of customization to be had when combining all of these factors. Personally, I find the gameplay absolutely engaging. Finding that weapon combination that fits your playstyle, or completing those tough missions with a slither of health and a slither of ammo left is extremely satisfying. The environments themselves are also extremely detailed and basically everything on the entire level is destructible with the exception of the walls surrounding the whole level itself. So as you can imagine, cover is a big part of the game, line of sight is really important, you'll be using the environment to your advantage and at other times you'll be needing to destroy to make a quick getaway. As I mentioned before, the environments are completely destructible, so this can prove to be both an ally as well as an enemy in those tough situations. And I'll say that unlike some of the other twin stick shooters out there, Brigador is slower paced, more tactical and definitely more deliberate. You need to consider where you fire each shot, you need to consider which way you're facing because there is flanking damage, you take more damage when you're being shot from the sides and from the back. So there's a lot more tactical importance on the placement of your units and the placement of your shots. Also, when you start each map, the enemy is not in alert mode, which means their shields are not up. So if you haven't set the alarm off, you can potentially surprise enemies and take them out quite easily. But if you get spotted and the scout manages to set the alarm off, you are going to have an entirely different situation on your hands because the enemies are all going to start generating shields, which will without a doubt make the combat more challenging and more dangerous. Also, once the alarm gets set off, emergency walls are raised around key objectives on the map, which are going to hinder and slow your progress. But these walls will let enemies pass. But aside from these things, there are other tactical decisions that can be made. For example, when you start a map, you can choose to find the substations on the level and destroy them before the alarm goes off. In the event that the alarm does go off, which will prevent these emergency walls from being raised. Alternatively, you could destroy the comm stations, which will slow the rate at which the alarm will be triggered if you are spotted, and this kind of thing. So this all adds another tactical level into how you will approach a level, and why knowing a level is going to be extremely important on the harder difficulty levels in the game. Also, certain objects in the environment are explosive, so they can be used to destroy enemies, but can also severely damage or even destroy you if they are destroyed by enemies while you are nearby. The propagation of sound is another thing that you need to consider in this game. Certain weapons are louder than other weapons, explosions make noise. And all of these things will attract the attention of enemies who will then come to investigate the source of the noise, which allow you to basically set up ambushes or distractions if you so desire. So all in all, the entire experience is very tactical. When to engage, when to retreat, where do you stand, what are you standing next to? All of these things need to be taken into account when you're playing Brigador. So there's definitely a lot of strategy here in my opinion. This game is tough. It's pretty difficult. It's definitely not for casual players, in my opinion. Unless of course you have a bucket load of patience. Of course on the easier difficulties, once you understand the game mechanics, it is possible to run and gun. But as the difficulty increases, things can go south in a heartbeat. You can go from full health to being dead on that fifth mission of a five mission run. And let's just say that can be quite frustrating after playing for 30 minutes and having absolutely nothing to show for it when you die. So I would say if you enjoy a challenging tactical twin stick shooter, then you'd probably enjoy this. If you are a more casual player and want a quick fix with a game that's easy to learn and get into, I think that the steep learning curve here and high difficulty might be a little bit off-putting. And I think that the fact that the game does such a poor job of explaining itself from within itself only compounds the issue. If you can get past a poor tutorial and the lack of explanations and don't mind doing some research online or checking out some of the forums, there is a lot to be rewarded here with in Brigador. But it's not for everybody. So if what you've seen and heard piques your interest, you can head over to Steam and you can pick up Brigador for $20 or your regional equivalent. Otherwise, that sums up this video. If you've enjoyed the video, you can support my channel by liking, sharing and subscribing or even visiting me on my new Patreon page. 
If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below. I've been Charling. Until next time. Marshall, 170, 24 Angels, Niner. Second, first time, 3-3, approach by 17.